Jamie Bowman here. Have you ever wondered why some people are tall and some people are short? I know I have. I'm short and I have always wondered why I'm not tall. Why are some apples tart and green while other apples are red and sweet and yummy? Um, well, that would be the work of DNA. Today, we are gonna take a really good close look at DNA by extracting it from some strawberries. Before we get started, you're gonna need a few pieces of equipment, some materials. So I'm gonna show you what I would use in the lab and some substitutions you can make if you wanna follow along with us at home. So here I have a couple of containers. These are glass containers that have some numbers on the side. We call these beakers. They have a nice little spout where you can pour and they have some, we call graduations here, to make them easy for measuring. I have a large one and a small one. I don't expect you to have these at home, so what are some things that we can use in place? So maybe a couple of nice measuring cups, they have that same spout, and also the ability to measure. Also just a plain plastic or glass would work. It's nice that they're clear, because that way you can see what's going on inside. So here are a few substitutions if you don't have beakers. Next, I have a graduated cylinder. This helps me measure more accurately than the beakers would because it's a smaller diameter tube and I can measure more accurately. Again, I don't expect you to have these at home, but here we need 100 milliliters. And look, my measuring cup measures 100 milliliters easily. So this would be a great substitute for a graduated cylinder. Next, I like to use a scale to measure my salt. I'm gonna be using some salt in a minute and I wanna measure it by weight. That doesn't matter, you don't have to do that. You can also use measuring spoons. I'll give you the equivalent in measuring spoons. So if you don't have a scale at home, a kitchen scale, measuring spoons work just fine. I will be using a sieve like this in order to separate some solids from liquids. If you don't have a sieve at home, you can also substitute, this is a reusable coffee filter. I also have just a plain funnel and coffee filter here will also work just as well. I will be using a pipette, which is another way to measure when I wanna measure smaller amounts. Again, you can use a measuring cup, will work just fine. As long as it has a little spout that you can pour off, that will work great. Um, and this is the pipette that I will be using along with my pipette. You will also need a Ziploc bag of some sort a bamboo skewer, if you don't have a bamboo skewer, try finding a um, toothpick would be, work great. Now a few things that you will absolutely need to have is you're going to need to have some sort of soap. This is dish soap, shampoo would work. I like to go with the clear one so it doesn't interrupt what I'm doing, I can see. See the reactions. I am going to be using some isopropyl alcohol. This is 91%, I like using it better than 70, but if that's all you have, that will work as well and I will be using just some plain table salt. Also, you're going to need some strawberries. These were fresh picked from my garden this morning. Here I have about five, say medium-sized strawberries. So those are the things that you're going to need in order to follow along if you want to do this with me. So I'm gonna pause right here, give you a chance to go collect your materials. Before we begin, let's review a few things. First, DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is found in every living thing. And we also know that every living thing is made up of smaller units called cells. DNA is a complex molecule that is found in nearly every living cell and every living thing. Today, we are going to extract the DNA from strawberries. So first off, are strawberries plants or animals? You're right, they are plants. And then remember the main difference between plant cells and animal cells is the presence of a cell wall. That's what gives plants their structure. We have bones in our bodies to help give our cells structure, but plants need that rigid cell wall to help them keep its shape. So today we have, our first task is to break down that cell wall. Now, 
The DNA is found, if you think about the plant cells and the animal cells, most of the DNA is found in the nucleus of each cell, and which is more towards the center. So in order for us to get to that DNA, we're going to have to break down those cell walls. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our Ziploc bag and our strawberries, and we are going to break down those cell walls. So go ahead and place your strawberries. You can leave the green caps on or take them off, does not matter. They have DNA in them as well. Now I'm gonna get the air out of my zip top bag, seal it up good, and then I'm gonna smash my strawberries. This is the fun part, it's kind of therapeutic. So I can smash them between my fingers. I can use the flat part of my palm there to smash them up. Remember, we've gotta break down all those cell walls in order to get to that DNA. And what you don't wanna do is use your fist because there's still some air in here and that might pop your bag and make a big mess. So let's spend a few minutes breaking down those cell walls. Now that we have broken down all of our cell walls in here, as you can see, and mine is nice and liquidy, kind of a nice strawberry puree. For our next step, we have, if you think about the cell again, after we've broken down that cell wall, the next thing we have to get through is that cell membrane. Well, the cell membrane is made up of what we call a lipid layer. And lipid is just a fancy science word for like fats and oils. So what do we use at home to sometimes break down fats and oils? Dish soap. So we're gonna use some dish soap, shampoo, hand soap, anything you happen to have. You're gonna need about 10 milliliters. If you don't have anything that measures in milliliters, that will be about two teaspoons. So we're gonna take our small beaker, or if you have a small measuring cup, small glass, anything like that will work. And in that, we are gonna combine our 10 milliliters, or let's say two teaspoons of dish soap. One hundred milliliters of water. Again, you don't have to have a graduated cylinder. Any kind of measuring cup will do. Um, most measuring, most glass measuring cups will measure in milliliters as well. So I'm going to pour that in there. And then next, I'm going to need four grams of salt. So I'm going to weigh that out. I'll make sure I, I've just got a piece of paper on my scale here, and make sure that it is set to grams and that it's zero, now I'm gonna measure four grams. There we go, now I have four grams. Now if you're using teaspoons, that would be just a little bit less than a full teaspoon. So go ahead and measure your four grams and we're gonna mix all of those things right into our small glass container. Now I'm gonna take my bamboo skewer and just stir this solution up. I'm done with my scale now. Just stir this up. And remember we said that this, the, what we needed this for was to break down those cell membranes. So we're gonna be working from the outside of the cell all the way into the center. Um, so now I've got it nice and stirred up. And I am going to carefully open my zip top bag Make sure I hold that with one hand, get a firm grip, and then I'm gonna pour my salt solution into the bag. Now I'm gonna give this a nice little massage. Just nice and mixed up. And now I'm going to wait about three to five minutes and let this incubate, let it work on all those cell walls or cell membranes in there and break them all down. While we're waiting on that to incubate, let's talk a little bit about why we added the salt. Let's review for just a minute. So we smashed them up with our hands to break down the cell walls. We added dish soap to break down the cell membranes, but remember we also added salt. What does the salt do? Um, so in the center of the cell, in the nucleus, where the DNA is usually located, it's located in the form of chromosomes often. So I want you to imagine chromosomes are like big skeins of yarn. They're inside and in that skein of yarn or here this twine, it's all this is tightly woven into a really small kind of compact 
little form. Well, we need that DNA to not be small and compact. We want it all big and open so that we'll be able to see it. So imagine unraveling that and how much more space that takes up once it's unraveled. Let's take just a second to think about the structure of DNA. DNA is made up of, it's called a double-stranded molecule. I want you to visualize a ladder. And now imagine that ladder is made out of rubber or something that's flexible. And we're gonna take our hands and we're gonna twist that ladder. And it's gonna be kind of a spiral. Now instead of a ladder, we have a spiral staircase. It kind of goes up in what we call a helix or at spiral. So that's what DNA looks like. You've got the two ladder parts, this, the, and then you have it connected with rungs going across. So that's what the DNA molecule looks like inside those cells. And in order for us to be able to see it, we need to cut that half, those two parts of the ladder in half and unravel it. We call that denaturing. That's why we add the salt, because it takes it from tightly wound into nice and big and open where we can see it into strings like that. So now that we have let, we've had this sit aside for a few minutes and let it incubate, now we're gonna need to separate all the solid parts of this from the liquid parts. So I'm going to be using beaker and then I really like this um, reusable coffee filter. So I'm gonna set that right here inside my beaker. And then I'm going to open my container. I'm gonna give it one last good squeeze, one last good massage. Make sure it's all mixed up in there. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to slowly pour it into my filter. And this is gonna filter out all those solid particles that we don't need that'll get in a way and will not allow us to see the DNA. And we just need that liquid. We just need that solution there. So we're just gonna let this sit for just a minute and let it all drain out. Now, if you want, you can take this. I like to use the flat end so I don't poke any holes in this and just gently stir and let all that goodness filter through. Now that all my liquid has drained out, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this filter and set it aside. I no longer need that. And then let's take a look. So right now we have, in here we have strawberries and dish soap and salt and a little bit of water. And right now there's DNA in there, but you can't see it. So I want you to think about, um, think about something like sweet tea. We know the sugar's in there, but we don't see the sugar. It's dissolved in there. Right now, DNA is dissolved in that solution. DNA is what we call is soluble in a water solution. We need that DNA to come out of solution. So just like some things will dissolve in water and others won't, if you've ever tried to mix oil and water, you know that oil will not dissolve in water. We're going to have to use something else to add to our solution to pull that DNA out. We call that precipitate. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna use cold rubbing alcohol. I've had this in my freezer. So we're gonna use cold isopropyl alcohol and we are going to make an easy layer right on top of this, and that is going to pull or precipitate that DNA out of solution. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a pipette. If you want, you can use, um, if you've got a little medicine cup or a tablespoon measure. I would use anywhere from 10 to 20 milliliters is fine, or about two tablespoons would be fine. One to two tablespoons would be just fine. So I'm going to do this twice, so I've got plenty in there, and I'm just gonna pull up my alcohol in here. And I don't want it to disrupt everything. I don't want it to mix down in there because it'll take a few minutes to settle on top. What I want it is just to gently go on top. So instead of pouring it right into the middle, I'm letting it gently drain right down the side. I'm touching the inside of this beaker with, the, with my pipette tip so that the alcohol just runs right down the side. And I'm going to do that twice for a total of 20 milliliters. And you can do 10 or 20, either works just fine. Okay, 
So now, set this aside. Okay, so if you look at the, if you see what the DNA looks like in, if you're looking at yours, it should look like a spider web has kind of formed on top. It's kind of veiny and goes out like that. Now I'm going to take my bamboo skewer and I'm just going to twirl it around in there, kind of like I'm making cotton candy. I'm twirling it with my fingers as I'm moving it around and swirling around to get all of that DNA on there. And here's what it looks like. Yep, it looks a little bit like snot. Um, so this is DNA. Isn't that cool? If you'll watch in there, you'll see it. So you'll have more kind of collecting at the top as it precipitates out. Okay, now that we have our DNA, so what? What do we do with it? Why is it useful? Why do people extract DNA from strawberries or anything else? Well, we remember at the beginning, we talked about how DNA controls traits. So let's think back to our strawberries. What is it we like about strawberries? Um, they're very pretty. I like the red color. They're juicy. They're sweet. They're tasty. A little bit tart on my tongue. And that's a really good strawberry. Right now, it's strawberry season in North Carolina, which means I can get them at farm stands and in my backyard. Uh, but strawberry season in North Carolina is very short. It only lasts for a couple of months. But I can go to the grocery store almost any day and find strawberries. Well, how is that? We get most of our strawberries here either from Florida or California where they can grow them year round. And these strawberries have to be able to be shipped all the way across the country and still be yummy tasty when they get to the grocery store. So we call that shelf life or shelf stable. So strawberries, they need to have that trait if they're going to be marketable. Um, another thing that we like about strawberries is we want them to be nice and bright red. Nobody wants a green strawberry. Um, so that's another trait that's controlled by DNA, the color. Uh, strawberries, we want them to be nice and juicy and sweet. That's another trait that's controlled by DNA. All of these things are controlled by DNA as well as other things, maybe resistance to disease or pests or drought. So if we take all those traits and we might have one strawberry that's really, really resistant to disease and another strawberry over here that's really plump and red and juicy. Well, what if we breed those two strawberries together? I wonder if we'll have both of those traits. The way we find out is we extract that DNA and we sequence it and we see, does this new strawberry or this hybrid have the traits we want? That's one reason that we extract DNA from things. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you had fun and I hope you had learned a lot by extracting DNA from strawberries. <music>